Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 16. It's on density, which is a measure of the compactness of matter. And so what we have here are a number of fluids that have different densities. At the bottom we have maple syrup, followed by dish soap and water and wine and vegetable oil and olive oil. And so what do we know? Well the most dense material, the maple syrup, is going to be at the bottom. And the least dense is going to be the olive oil at the top. And so matter has a property called density, which measures the compactness of that matter. And so it's affected by mass. And so let me show you a couple of different objects. So we've got object one, object two, and then object three. And so what those circles represent inside the squares is they represent the atoms inside that matter. And so if I were to ask you a question, which of these three have the greatest mass, your tendency is to say this one over here has the greatest mass. But if you look at it, they all have the same amount of atoms, and so they're all going to have the same mass. And so just mass alone doesn't tell us anything about the compactness. What do we need? We also need to divide that mass by the volume. And so we set it up as an equation where density is equal to mass over volume. And since the mass in all of these is remaining constant, the larger the volume is, which is going to be in the denominator, then the smaller our density is going to be. And so this would be the one with the smallest density, and then this would be the one with the highest density, or it's the most compacted of all the matter. And you should be able to calculate density given objects. And so if we look at a bowling ball and a volleyball, and I were to ask you which one has more density, well, you would know that that bowling ball has more material on the inside. If we were to cut it open, you would find that the volleyball is empty. It's filled with mostly air, but that bowling ball is going to be filled with lots of matter on the inside. And so now, even though the volumes are the same, since the mass of the bowling ball is much higher, it's going to have a greater density. So you should be able to make predictions just by looking at objects and even looking at how objects change over time. What would happen to the density of a volleyball as we heat it up and those molecules move apart? It would become less dense and as we cool it down it's going to become more dense. And so this is a PHET simulation. What we're going to do is look at some different objects and figure out what their density is. And so what we've got here is a little bit of styrofoam. And I'm going to stop it right here. We can see that it has a mass of 0.75 kilograms and then a volume of 5 liters. And so how do you figure out the density? It's simply the mass divided by the volume. And you can see the density right here is 0.15 grams per liter. And so now let's change that from styrofoam to wood. You can see that the volume staying the same, but the mass, since it's 2, and the, and the volume is 5, we now have a density of 0.4. You'll also see that it's still floating in this water we have to the side. Now let's switch that to ice. So if we look at ice, what is our mass? The mass is 4.6 kilograms. What is our volume? It's 5 liters. And so you can see that the density is 0.92. Now it's approaching 1. And what has a density of 1? That's going to be the water itself. And so since it's less dense than the water, you can see the ice is floating. It's not floating as high in the water as the wood in the styrofoam bed, but it, stir but it still is floating. Now let's switch that to a brick. And what happens there? You can see that our mass is twice that of our volume. So now we have a density of 2 kilograms per liter. And it definitely sinks. And then we can move it to something like aluminum. And we have a much higher mass compared to that volume and so we have a high density. So that's why it sinks. Now what you should be able to do in this physics class is calculate the density of an object. So I'm going to take object B and we're going to weigh it. We could figure out what its gravitational mass is. It's 0.64 kilograms. And now I'm going to use water displacement. So you can see the level in the water is 100 but as I add object B the level in the water goes up to 101. Now let's take object A, get its gravitational mass. You can see it's 65.14. And now let's use that displacement of the water again to figure out what's the volume of that cube. You can see it went up to 103.38. And so could you calculate the density of those two objects? And could you figure out if they're going to sink or float? And so here's the important information that you need. You can see that both of them started with a water level at 100 liters. And with object B, that rose to 101 liters, and it had a mass of 0.64. And then with object A, it rose to 103.38, and it had a mass of 65. So you should pause the video right now 
and figure out the density of object B and object A. If you forgot the equation, it's going to be right here. And you should also write right next to that, is it going to float or is it going to sink? So make sure you try this on your own. You should be able to almost do it in your head. All right, so hopefully you've figured out the density. And so now we're going to throw those two objects in. And so we'll throw in object B and it floats. So you should have got a density less than one and object A sinks. So it should have been greater than one. These are the values that I got for density of objects B and objects A. And so you should be able to, at this point, predict the density of objects. You also should be able to experimentally determine the density of objects. You can do it by measuring their volume, figuring out the volume of a cube, for example, or you can use water displacement to do it. And I hope that was helpful.